Hey guys, you're watching Kitty Crafts. Today I will be showing you my first experience with wheel throwing pottery. I've tried making pottery before when I was a kid in summer camp, but the only thing that I made on the wheel was this slug looking thing. I was just happy to make something by myself that was functional, and this little piece of pottery here is holding a bunch of my decorative firecrackers. I don't know why I put these in there, but it works. It fits all of them. After all these years, I decided to sign myself up for a five-week pottery class that was three hours per class every week. And 15 hours later, I learned a lot about working with clay and using the wheel, and I just had a lot of fun making my own pottery. I definitely got my hands dirty and my pants were always a mess when I came back home. Pottery is pretty relaxing and satisfying when you get the hang of it and I'm pretty happy when I get to see that I created something that even remotely resembles the ceramics that you can buy in a store. Here's a very scuffed overview of how to make pottery. First, I pat 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 the clay until I get it into a nice clay ball with no air bubbles and then it goes splat right onto the middle of the wheel. You always have to keep your hands wet so that you can work with the clay and I'm just pushing down on it just to try to make a seal with the wheel. Then there's kind of this process of making a cone shape and then flattening that to try to help get rid of more bubbles, I think. And it would be a lot easier if my arms wouldn't be shaking all the time. I really had to keep my arms steady and firm in order to center the clay, which is a very important step to making pottery. If it's not centered, then it will always be wobbly and then you won't have a very nice round piece. So of course, I just had to ask my instructor to help me out. My instructor has so many years of experience making pottery, so my clay was centered in literally two seconds. Don't know how I can do it better, but I just know you have to have a really strong and firm, steady hand. I think one of the most satisfying parts for me is making the hole for whatever cup or bowl that you're making. So you just have to push down your thumb with the help of your other fingers at a four o'clock angle and just slowly pull out so that the walls will start forming. You have to be careful not to push your thumb too deep or else you might create a hole at the bottom of your vessel, which we don't want. Then to get the wall of the vessel a little bit higher, I have to kind of squeeze my fingertips against the clay and apply equal pressure as I slowly move them upwards so that I can get a nice even wall. This can be pretty tricky and I ran into lots of problems where the top became too heavy because I didn't squeeze in equal amounts so then it collapsed on the top because it was too heavy but this one turned out okay and I'm using this kind of wooden knife tool to mark down where to cut off some of the excess clay so that I can scrape it off of the wheel. I have to add some water so that I can help guide the wire cutter through the bottom of the clay and just slowly push it to the edge of the wheel so that I can put it to dry. After about a week of drying, the clay is now in this leather hard state. So it's not completely dry yet, but it's not at all wet like it was when it was first made. This step of pottery is also very fun and satisfying. It's called trimming and it's where you help remove some of that excess clay at the bottom that you don't need and help clean up the edges a bit. This is also the step where you can add what's called a foot to the bottom of your piece. I'll show you that a bit later, but here I'm just marking a circle and then trimming out the inside of the circle so that I can create a sort of crater or indent at the bottom. There's actually a bin that is full of these shavings because none of this clay ever goes to waste. They can reuse them even if they dried a little bit. And that is the piece all done and ready to be underglazed, which is when you add all of your paint and designs. After underglazing, it then gets fired in the kiln and then the instructors will add a glaze on top, which is kind of like a top coat to finish it off. Here is all of my finished pottery. I'm so excited to see what they look like. So the instructors were the ones who helped with glazing all of these pieces. I only added underglaze and they weren't even fired yet. So they had to be put in the kiln 
well, two times. So first time is after their underglaze, and then the second time is after my instructors added the clear gloss. It's essentially just glass that goes over all of the pieces, and then they fired that one last time to make the finished piece. So I really don't know how they look afterwards. It shouldn't be too much of a surprise because it's a clear glaze that they put. So what I put as the underglaze is what I should get in the finished product. First piece. It's like opening Christmas presents. What is this is this is the mug. This one my instructor helped me with adding the handle because I tried to add a handle to another one, but it fell off. So my instructor helped make another uh, handle that she put on one of the vessels that I made. Oh my gosh, this is so cute! <gasps> Whoa, I could actually use this mug. So this part, it doesn't have any glaze. You can't fire it with glaze at the bottom or else it'll stick to the kiln. So this part is what it would look like without any glaze. And then the rest of it has that shiny, nice finish to it. And this one, I just added little hearts. Oh, this is so cute. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try putting a drink in this afterwards. Piece number two. Yes, this is my pixel heart pink. Whoa, this turned out pretty cool. Uh, it's a pink container or a, it's more like a bowl that I could use to put some stationery or, uh, or snacks. Oh my gosh, I love this. I probably could have cleaned up the lines a bit, but from far away, that looks great as a pixel heart. And again, you see at the bottom, this is the what the clay would have looked like without the glaze just white and then the pink uh, black and red here this was painted on using underglaze oh my this turned out so great i love this all right piece number three. Oh, okay so there are actually three things in here <gasps> yes this is yeah, this is my turtle koopa's new feeding bowl so for this one, I actually failed at making a bowl and the only thing I was able to make is this tiny little dish. This one was the first one that I painted, so I did an underglaze with the word Koopa here first and then I added a green glaze. This is the only one that I glazed myself, um, but I added this green glaze after I fired it one time already with the Koopa as the underglaze and then they only had to fire it again after I glazed it with this nice green. I was worried you wouldn't be able to see the Koopa, but it showed through perfectly like this, and I can't wait for her to try eating out of this dish. Then another fail that I turned into something is this kind of cherry blossom vessel. I don't know what this will be used for, maybe to hold paper clips again or just tiny M&Ms, I don't know. Yeah, this one, I tried to make it into a bowl, but then it kept getting smaller and smaller because I kept failing at it. And then I just pushed it in a little bit to make it look kind of like a flower. So yeah, it looks not too bad. And then the third one, it's really cool. This one was made using a mix of red clay and the regular clay. So the studio had some extra red clay that they used and said that we could try uh, blending them together to make this really cool swirl effect. And it looks so nice. It looks like, like Jupiter. Yeah, that's a pretty cool effect. This is what it looks like without the gloss. Oh yes, this looks great too. I don't know. I don't know what to do with so many of these bowls. I could put like nuts in here. It was really cool to try out this method, but I don't know if I'll be able to do that again at that studio. Next up, ta-da! Oh my gosh. Yes, this was the mug that I wanted to make originally. It had a handle here, but then it fell off and I couldn't fix it. I really wanted to do like a speckled effect on a mug and I just got some underglaze on the paintbrush and I just Ooh. 
See, you could you could totally you could use this as a teacup maybe. It's a bit big and thick, but it fits in your hand pretty well. Piece number seven. This is my egg, my egg dish. So this was another failed bowl. Um, the walls collapsed and they went f out like this. So the only thing I knew to do was to make a sunny side up egg. I don't know what to put inside of it. Once again, maybe nuts, more nuts. I don't know. The only sad thing is that I accidentally got some underglaze over here on the egg. So that's a little imperfection, but that's okay. The rest of it, it looks, it looks pretty good. One of the things that we learn in this class is to embrace mistakes and surprises. So when my bowl failed, I was inspired to just make an egg and it turned out pretty good. Like that's not too bad for a failed piece. You wouldn't even know it was a failed piece. Piece number eight. All right, so this one, this is probably the worst one I have. It's, um, I don't know what this is. It's, it was supposed to be a big bowl, but um, now it's like, uh, I don't know what I can use this, a gravy bowl. Yeah, I don't really like this one. It didn't turn out that nice. I just added like little hearts in the middle. It's not like the nicest piece for sure. This is probably last on my list of of my favorite pieces. You can also tell it was pretty hard to glaze because here at the bottom is, they kind of missed some some spots, but like this piece just wasn't easy to hold. So yeah, this one will probably put it with the plants. Now for the last two pieces, these are both bowls and they're actually successful bowls. Aha, all right. So this is uh, my my second favorite bowl. It is a uh, just a pink mixed with green kind of swirl pattern in the middle. And I'm gonna give this to my grandma as her, a rice bowl or ice cream bowl. She loves strawberry ice cream. So I think this would be a nice ice cream bowl for her. And then here at the bottom, it has um, like a foot. I think that's what they called it, a foot. So that it looks, it looks like one of those rice bowls in a Chinese restaurant. Last but not least, my favorite bowl because it's the best one that I have. It is, ooh, my Naruto bowl. It's a little bit dirty on the inside because I didn't wipe away the, the black spots well enough. But here in the middle, we got the hidden leaf village symbol. And I used the apricot underglaze that they had at the studio. Yeah, I love it. This is a great orange, perfect for Naruto. Yeah, I definitely could clean up the inside a little bit better because now you can, you can see kind of the smudges of black in there. But now I know that I could definitely improve on that part. The symbol was carved in using a tool and then I just filled it with black underglaze. And then again, it's just a clear glaze on the outside with my stamp at the bottom. So this one, this bowl is much rounder than, than this one, but these are two bowls that I can imagine myself actually eating something out of. Let me know which one is your favorite piece. I absolutely love this. It's like a, a mug without a handle. Same as this one. I really like this one as well. These two are my favorite little desk cups, you could call them. This is my favorite bowl, the Naruto bowl. Let's try to actually drink something out of this. I just need to wash this first. I don't know if it's dishwasher safe, but it's definitely food safe glaze. I have the perfect drink for this mug, some strawberry milk. Cheers to our first successful pottery class haul. I made 10 different items. Most of them are actually usable, so that's pretty cool. And 
yeah, that's some great strawberry milk. I signed up for 10 more weeks of classes, so I hope I can improve my pottery in the future. And once I finish those pieces, I'll show you guys again. And as always, you can follow me on Instagram at cutiecrafts to check out the things that I like to make. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me try pottery. Thanks for watching, keep creating, and I'll see you guys next time with another cutie craft. Bye. No leaks.